Hello and welcome to this video. The topic is the solution to the currently ongoing battle between Mold and Medi on the Chain Fountain. My last experiment may bring just the kind of data we need to resolve this puzzle. Before we start, I apologize for the mechanical voice, but I'm a bit autistic, and my mic performance isn't that great. Since there is a lot to be told, and precision matters, I'll let an enthusiastic machine do the talking. Now back to the theme. In order to prove or disprove molds and Medi's hypotheses I have performed an experiment which seems to throw a wrench in my previous understanding of the chain fountain. Previously I believed that the rising arch of the chain fountain is caused by simple inertia. However the effect seems to be way more complex than what I originally thought it would be. In fact in this regard both mold and Medi seem to be wrong as well. What I've discovered is that a rising chain fountain indeed can be made with a regular chain, although much force is needed to start it up. The experiments have been very inconsistent though, and at the time of capturing the high-speed footage I had no idea why. What appeared to be just poor physical performance on my side, turned into a game-changer. Just before reviewing the footage I was already skeptical about the current hypotheses surrounding the phenomenon. There is no physical reason for the falling chain to rise above the obstacle due to its velocity. And as Mold pointed out, regular chains keep accelerating after the collapse of the fountain, so there is no problem with lack of velocity. In fact, after viewing Mold's video, it appeared to me that the velocity rising is problematic, as this must pull the fountain down. And that would be a correct assumption to make. After watching my own footage with regular chains rising, I've discovered it doesn't matter how hard I pull on the chain, nor how exactly is the chain laid out. It matters whether or not the chain hits the table. That's right, in order for the fountain to rise, the falling chain has to slow down. What that implies is a possibility that the bead chains and ropes do not just freefall. Instead, I hypothesize that for some reason the bead chains as well as ropes send shock waves along its length. This may have two different effects that could happen simultaneously. One effect is periodic loss of velocity on the falling line, causing the rising line to outrun the falling line. Second effect is the chain acting like a whip and throwing the arch of the chain fountain upwards. This would explain multiple different paradoxes that have been observed during presentations. 1. The failure of the chain fountain during Mold's record hunt. You cannot snap a chain without pulling on it. Shockwave traveling back through the system however, will tear the chain without a problem. 2. The fact that chain fountain sometimes just picks up a chunk of tangled chain from the container and spits it out. This wouldn't be possible if the beads were kicking the chain up individually on their own. 3. The lack of collapse of the chain on the rising side. Had the force on this side been so significant, the beads should hit each other. Instead, the chain remains in tension at all times. 4. The fact that not all stiff chains work so well as a fountain. In order to start the fountain, the chain has to get into an oscillation. If that's not possible, the fountain will not rise and chain will only accelerate until it runs out of length. 5. Mold's complaint on the high-speed footage being not so useful. Yes, if the thing you are trying to observe doesn't exist, it won't show on high-speed footage. In fact it won't show even in x-rays or magnetic resonance because it's not there. As demonstrated by my experiment, regular chain will happily rise up after its acceleration was interrupted and then allowed to continue. This points towards the requirement of oscillation. And as Mold's experiment with power drill have shown, it was challenging for him to get a nice wrap with the bead chain on the drum. Instead, the chain would fly wildly around the drum. This may point towards the chain periodically feeding faster than was the rotation of the drum. Another clue are the graphs shown during simulations. With the fountain successful, graph would show a wild forest of spikes, again suggesting that the force is delivered in pulses. And finally, the force shown during the simulation spiking at the bead just about to lift off. A shock wave traveling through the system would most likely eventually discharge what remains of it somewhere. Note that this doesn't completely rule out Mold's hypothesis on the beads jumping. Personally though, if that's what's happening, I don't feel like that will be the major contributing mechanism, but more of a side effect of other actions happening at the same time. I can now only recommend to perform an experiment with very high-speed high-resolution camera, 
to see if the wave hypothesis is correct. If it is, we should be seeing mechanical oddities happen on the falling chain. Should we focus on a single bead and follow its path at a constant speed, it should periodically get out of alignment. More or less, the whole line should be pulsing as it stretches periodically. Alternatively, the shock instead of slowing down the falling line, may be just giving more energy to the rising line and allow it to accelerate. Even so, the mechanical effects on the chain still should be visible in some way. Since I lack the equipment and time to do this, I'll leave this part to the more capable champions. If I'm correct, it may just happen that nobody really gets to have the thousand Canadian cents, as neither of the competitors really had the right solution. However, for now, this is just a hypothesis. I'm Pegaskiller, and I wish you a nice day.